What's up, everybody? It has been a day full of content here. And when stuff happens, I want to make sure I get out the information and what I think it means and why I think it happened as quickly as possible. And just today, we have found out that Judge Boyce in Idaho, the judge on Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell's case, who has refused to separate and sever their cases throughout the entirety of the prosecution, no matter how many times specifically Chad Daybell's team asks for the cases to be severed, has changed his mind. And this comes on the heels of Lori Vallow's team filing their motion to dismiss based on a lack of speedy trial, which the judge denied. So we're going to talk about all that and more, when these trials are going to be, what we think is going to happen, how this may affect the case after you hit that like button and subscribe to our page to make sure that this case and every other case we follow here on The Lawyer You Know, you are a part of and you get in the comments and let me know what you think. We've talked about this many times. And I want to know right from the jump whether you think it was the right call or not for the judge to sever these cases. Say yes to sever or no to sever to let me know just where you're at as you followed this case and kind of heard the differences in their stories, the differences in their charges, which we're going to look at today and kind of compare who's charged with what and why the judge would have um, decided to sever their cases at this point when he has refused to do so throughout the process when there were lots of reasons um, to sever these cases. You know, I mean, from the jump, when Chad Daybell was asking to sever these cases, the judge continuously said no because mainly what I felt was a um, reason in judicial economy. We don't want to waste the time and money, the state's resources, um, the law enforcement officer's time, the state attorney's time. Um, they should be doing other things than having to try this long and laborious trial twice. Well, the judge has changed his mind. And if you remember, I disagreed with that ruling before, and I thought the judge should sever these cases in an interest of justice to make sure each criminal defendant accused of a crime who is presumed innocent gets a fair trial for the crimes that they are charged with. And that if the jury just thinks it's so bad they convict everybody, we do not want a windfall verdict. We only want people convicted um, who actually committed these crimes and the state can prove that beyond a reasonable doubt. Well, I think the judge's change of heart mainly came because of the speedy trial issues. Chad Daybell has waived his right to a speedy trial. Lori Vallow has invoked her right and demanded a speedy trial. That is a major difference in criminal defense cases because that is an absolute right of the criminal defendant. Chad Daybell is saying he cannot possibly get ready in time for this April 3rd trial date. Lori Vallow is saying the April 3rd trial date is too late and outside the statute of limitations even if it's just a couple weeks or days or months or whatever it may be, depending on how you calculate it. We did a whole video on that. If you want to see the timeline and whether or not it's technically outside the speedy trial time period, which it is, and the judge even admits it in his order, check out the prior videos on um, that topic. But as we sit here today, Lori Vallow and her team press forward toward the April 3rd trial date, and Judge Boyce did everything he could to try to keep these things together but I think that Chad Daybell and his team probably had a pretty legitimate reason to get a continuance with all this additional discovery. We saw they were just given huge amounts of documents within the last couple months. And Chad Daybell said, if this was the, I'm sorry, Chad Daybell's lawyer said, if this is the only case I worked on and read these documents every day, I still wouldn't have them prepared in time for the April 3rd trial date, which is about a month away exactly. So the judge probably found that compelling and found that he must, in the interest of justice, grant a continuance for Chad Daybell. And in order to do that, he needs to sever these cases in order to protect the speedy trial rights of Lori Vallow. Therefore, Lori Vallow is going to trial on the charges I'm going to put up on the screen in a second in April of this year. No cameras in the courtroom. Going to be kind of weird uh, discussing it and reacting to it with no video, but we'll figure out how much interest you guys have in it and we'll do our best to keep um, up to date on what's happening in that trial. And now, Chad Daybell's case, since it's been severed, is going to be continued. And originally he wanted to try the case in the fall of this year. We will see if they set a trial date. My guess is the judge wants to get this done ASAP. The state probably wants to get this done ASAP because the longer you wait, the more they're going to have to re-prepare for the trial, which is wasting even more time, which none of us want. Um, so I expect it to be shortly after Lori Vallow's 
um, trial date, maybe a few months later, maybe this fall, so that Alec, I'm sorry, not Alec Murdoch, so that Chad Daybell can have time to prepare his defense. And I think that is very, very important. Now let's look at the charges. And I think that looking at these charges is important to see It's important to look at um, what the differences are in these charges as to why this is just another reason I thought these cases should be severed. I think in order for fundamental fairness, they need to be severed because they had different kind of strategies on when they felt like they could be ready, when they felt like they could be prepared, what they were able to do on the case, the delays that were forced upon them because of the co competency issues. Lori Vallow is charged with... Uh, for the victims of J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan, first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, murder with Chad Daybell, grand theft by deception with T Tammy Daybell, conspiracy to commit first-degree murder with Chad Daybell, but then Charles Vallow, conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, not with Chad Daybell. That's important. Then Chad Daybell with J.J. and Tylee, first-degree murder, and conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, and grand theft. So those are very similar. Their charges with J.J. and Tylee are very similar. But then with Tammy Daybell, Chad's ex-wife, he's not only charged with the conspiracy to commit first-degree murder with Lori Vallow, but also the first-degree murder itself, that he actually did it. And so if you're Lori Vallow, you're thinking, well, maybe he did do it, and maybe the state's going to be able to prove he did it, and because I have these other conspiracy charges with him, they're just going to charge me and convict me with conspiracy of that as well, just to kind of pile on. That's not going to be fair. I think it'd be more fair to handle these cases separately. And I would agree with that. And then some of the additional charges for Lori Vallow, again, not for Chad Daybell. Conspiracy to commit first degree murder in relation to the death of her first husband, Charles Vallow, and grand theft related to social security benefits that were allocated for the care of J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan. Those are not crimes that Chad Daybell is charged with. That's going to be completely different evidence. We're not going to hear any evidence of Charles Vallow or any evidence of Social Security benefits in the Chad Daybell trial. So there actually is going to be some difference. There actually is going to be less evidence presented in the Chad Daybell trial. Uh, it should be a quicker trial, I would think, because of the less charges. But then Chad Daybell also has two counts of insurance fraud related to funds he received from policies on T Tammy Daybell. So he's charged with her murder, with conspiracy to commit her murder, and with collecting the insurance benefits of her uh, insurance policy fraudulently because he obviously is charged with committing these murders. So Charles Vallow is just going to be on Lori Vallow's case. The Social Security benefits just on Lori Vallow's case. Tammy Daybell, while there's going to be more charges in the Chad Daybell trial, they will also be including conspiracy to commit her murder in Lori Vallow's trial. They came together and wanted to murder Tammy Daybell, put together a plan, and Chad Daybell executed that plan, but Lori Vallow was involved. So we are still going to hear about Tammy Daybell in Lori Vallow's trial. You also better believe we're going to hear Chad Daybell's name a bunch in Lori Vallow's trial, and we're going to hear Lori Vallow's name a bunch in Chad Daybell's trial. And another little interesting tidbit that this is going to create, will Chad Daybell take a deal and testify against Lori Vallow? We don't know. Will Lori Vallow point the finger at Chad Daybell? We don't know. Will Chad Daybell point the finger at Lori Vallow? We don't know. So uh, additional intrigue comes now that these trials have been severed. Are we going to have the, they point the finger at each other, which creates reasonable doubt. Is one of them going to testify against the other? Who knows? And take some kind of deal? I don't know. But I think, and I have felt all along as painful as it is and as expensive as it is to the taxpayers and how unfair it may seem, this was the right call to sever these cases in order to protect both individual defendants' rights. One wants a speedy trial, one doesn't. There are different charges. There's different evidence. There are different victims. A lot of overlap, but there are enough differences, in my opinion, that we need to have these cases severed. And Judge Boyce's hand was kind of forced when the speedy trial issue really came to a head and he knows ain't no more continuances for Lori Vallow. He had to find with his judicial discretion that even though this is outside of her speedy trial rights, there is no prejudice and she is still going to trial 
within a reasonable amount of time to make sure there's no prejudice of her speedy trial timeline. And he must have felt like there was not good cause to deny yet another continuance by Chad Daybell and his team. Each individual defendant has their own rights. One can waive the Fifth Amendment right, one cannot. One can and testify and one might not testify. One can um, demand a speedy trial and one can waive it. We're seeing it play out right here before our eyes. I think this is the fair thing to do. I think this is the right thing to do, but I want you guys to let me know in the comments whether or not you agree. Um, and if you want to continue following this case, even though there's not video of inside the courtroom, which makes it a lot harder to try to understand and really see what the jury sees and hear and feel what the jury hears and feels, let me know in the comments and let me know by liking the video and subscribing to our page as always. Thank you for joining us and all these videos we're pumping out this week. We're going to continue to talk Murdoch until we get a verdict there. Um, so thanks for joining me. Until next time.